uh, this poem is in memory of Chris. And if you ever saw Chris perform, you know that he had a yellow box with a blue handprint on it, which he used as a percussion instrument. It's called The Blue Hand Upon the Yellow Box of Sound. From now on, others will sing your songs. Only we who knew you will hear your voice under theirs. Punk folk ballads that could be as savage as a claw hammer prizing open a crate, or as tender as the low November sun giving a gift of unexpected warmth. Signs of a complex nature at work. We remember the blue hand upon the yellow box of sound by the catalpa tree on the stage with several hundred people singing along about girls who comb their hair with a raven's wing. Make way delta dreams and lyrics that taste of salt and seaweed, fairgrounds and ferris wheels, and always running through them as it runs through our region, our towns, that river that names us. To quote that song you wrote for your father, so long, me old China. This is my latest book, it's called Sparrowhawk, and I'm going to read the title poem. And it came after seeing Sparrowhawk landing. Sparrowhawk. Suddenly, the bird song ceases. The sparrows seem as if they've been pulled back into the hedge by bands of invisible elastic. All chirping and chatter stops. The wings of the doves and the wood pigeons whir as they make for the safety in the trees. I look out of the kitchen window where the bird feeders full of fat balls and seed swing in the silent garden. And then I see the reason. A sparrow hawk has dropped like a stone from his blue home to rest upon the fence. His yellow gaze glares without malice at the deserted feeders, but he is not hunting. If he had have been, none would have seen him until he struck, swooping in low like a mini stealth fighter only a centimetre above the grass the displaced air parting stalks like an invisible comb through hair rippling on the surface of the water feature swifter than a swift only rising to hit his prey at a full 15 kilometres an hour leaving nothing but a cloud of feathers in his wake make no mistake he's not hunting he's at rest almost seeming to enjoy the effect his present has upon the denizens of the garden. I realize this is anthropomorphizing. It's a human fault. Just as some might demonize this pocket predator in Disney-esque categories of good and bad animals. He does what he's designed to do, feed into fuel flight, as seed is not enough to hold him aloft. This while in New Mexico, I was doing this is my first reading tour in the States. It's uh, it's called Coyote Poem. There's something tricky in the cosmos, something with pointy ears, something with a long nose, something with a ragged tail, something that steals your chickens. Something that hotwires your car. I'm talking Grand Theft Auto. I'm talking Grand Theft Auto. Something that drives a stolen Thunderbird across the red Martian desert of New Mexico badlands and smiles at you from the glossy cover of Arizona highways. Something that runs over a roadrunner on Route 66. Beep, beep, now, you little bastard. (laughs) (laughs) Owing for taking off your fur coat. We are bears. We are bears. We are bears. We are bears. For some of us who are in disguise. 
Ladies, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Billy Childish. Is this yours, Bill? No, mine. That's yours. So I was in recordings. Yeah. Okay. Is it okay? Yeah. It might be a bit booming. No, no, no. I know. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, now, put it in the edit. It's the beat, Bill. Uh, somehow I get involved in this doing poetry. How much time is that, Bill? Should you? It is now 15 minutes past nine. Yeah, so I haven't really got time for any of this nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I keep saying. Yeah, I know. 50 years, but I keep saying it. I sort of bit, so I'll read you a couple because, you know, I still want to fit in a little bit of music as well. I've got a couple marked down. I just I don't like reading much. <laughs> I am Billy Childish, ex-drunk and compulsive masturbator, light night, late night vomiter of good liquor, kisser of purple-lipped women, writer of poems celebrating the emptiness of my love, poems for the hungry, hungry, poems hungering for the moment of my passion, wishing it could always be so and to never let my cock fall. I am Billy Childish, ex-strong man and two-bit lover, late night namer of no. Names, corrupter of the literate, writer of poems that dare to dream to pass down the centuries and touch the hearts of the yet to be born, wishing to hold them all to my arms and kiss them all. I am Billy Childish, ex-poet and failed suicide, late night vomiter of truth and lies, kisser of the asses of girls like the stars of God, writer of poems to lick the thighs of the dead, for ex-lovers to denounce and teachers to hate, wishing to paint my life and to never let my voice Quieten. Mm. I am the uncorrected. Because I can't spell and refuse to show off with cheap tricks and still allow myself to paint like a monkey, I am not elevated. Fear me. Because I have no certificates, refuse to be educated, and my writing style is free, true and easy, yet I've written novels that disgust the senses, I am not elevated. Fear me. I am gloriously uncorrected and will be coming for you next. That's enough. That was the next one. I don't know why I write poems, it just happens. Yeah, that's why. Okay, I'm going to get the boys and girls up who can do some songs. Jesse Sayers! See if I can. Get me over around that. Mm. You always do that meeting in the bottom of your hand. Hello there. What are you doing? Don't say over there, mate. Just don't say over there. If you want to have a go. <laughs> So I'm severely hungover. I was all full of life last night. I had some good jokes last night, didn't I, Jim? They were rude. They were rude to reach me. He's crowing about his comedy again. Brilliant. I got drunk all the way through it, and I. Kerry said you didn't do any classic drunk. A few, um. That's why you. We got well, well. Oh, yeah, right. And we'll see if they're right. Pink around, mate. Totally. Jim saw like things they should be in tune and that's sort of <laughs> 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 nonsense. Just turn the bass up. Your vocal, that's not the volume, your volume's far left. Oh yeah. 
and that one is toe. Okay. <laughs> Stand your kind. I'm 
Is this not all going to jail? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is all ready for riding. Right, this is so... Right, this is a... Uh, yep, everyone's got their fingers crossed for Jim in the studio. <laughs> I said that, that wasn't sarcasm. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounded sarcasm. That's just yeah, yeah, natural, yeah, yeah. wouldn't it? <laughs> this is Stefan. Look at Jim! Look at Jim! Hey! Oh, that's just one time. That's heartwarming, isn't it? <laughs> Somebody, everyone's got somebody. There's a song in that. All right, step out. That is in. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> Isn't it? It's your mic working. 
Try one, two, one, two. Try another. see gigs ever in the after the 70s but I accidentally saw a couple of the old boys and Bo Diddley was playing the under club and he had this um, he wore 
the time. I don't know what that group from South End was called, the sort of R and B group who used to Eddie Nutter at all. No, no, not Fields or Flyers. I'm not sure, but they was they weren't there. They nearly got somewhere. They were probably only local, you know, in this south. And uh, Bo Walt, they did their first set, and Bo Walt on it. He had his lead for his tie, walked on, and he handed it to the guitarist, and the guitarist actually dropped it on the floor. And, <laughs> so they had to scurry down. He'll probably be used to this, to that cunt you played with. <laughs> 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 I don't know what you're talking to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, then the, um, there was a guy in the audience because he's playing a load of modern crap, and uh, someone in the audience kept shouting out Roadrunner, some hippie kid. And uh, he stopped the set and he said, I'm driving this car, boy. You just ride. <laughs> that was a pretty good line. <laughs> I've got a boat at least. I've got a boat at least. There's no time for any of that. I've got it. I like the way you didn't like the clash because that's too loud. Yeah. <laughs> like those big angst Robert Lloyd saw him in his underpants. Well, that's another one. That's enough to see. <laughs> well, he, he was uh, my mates in the Gruff Men or whatever. They were busking when he played King's Charles Hotel and they were doing some Bo Diddley numbers. <laughs> and then it's, the sky went dark and Bo was stood above him. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Walked off, and on his back he had some old army jacket with Bo Diddley and iron on letters coming up. Again, <laughs> it's pure class. <laughs> this is uh, got a move in. Is this F or something? Is it got a move? Not got a move, sorry, I've uh, got that. I've got that. Is it? This is a uh, slim half phone number. <laughs> Where I do 
Yeah, exactly. Give your fingers a rest. I'm going to be a solo. Yeah, it's time to get the stuff, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> now I know why your boss is so angry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too shy. <shame. laughs> I did have a conversation with him once in. Um, in the Hague in Holland. Right. Um, we're doing a poetry reading, and it, this is the guy at the pool, and he was. Uh, he got. There was a few people who liked it, and he was up front. He had a cassette player that he played through the speaker, and then he read parts of the Sun over that, so from the Sun newspaper. He turned up late because he'd gone to see some country group and was too drunk to find his way back. <laughs> and he came over to have a chat with me for about five minutes or so. And uh, then he left, and I said, like, didn't understand one single <laughs> word that he said to me. I just go, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You want to be in the yeah. group for three years? Yeah, no, I like, spoke to you must know Mark as well. Yeah. He has told me a bit about that. <laughs> yeah, sounds a laugh. Put on your mind, people grinning. In your face, don't you mind people grinning in your face? Just bear this in mind. A true friend is hard to find. Well, don't you mind people grinning in your face? Your mother will talk about you, your sister and your brother too. Just don't care trying to live, but to talk about you still. So bear this in mind, a true friend is hard to find. Don't you mind people grinning in your face? Don't you mind people grinning in your face? Well, they jump you up and down. They'll turn you round and round. Just as soon as your back is turned, they'll be trying to do you down. So bear this in mind. A true friend is hard to find. Don't you mind people grinning in your face? Don't you mind people grinning in your face?
don't know if it matters. Well, I can't, because if I do... That's all right, I don't know. Well, if you've got something on your lip... Well, if you've got something on your lip... That's scary. Do you want to try um <laughs> meet me with a button? Oh, if you want. Try it. What did I play? We've just bashed one up this afternoon at how it all. It's in the open J It's still not right this way.
you see, Rob, Rob's got himself in trouble because he's sort of like the mate saying, no, it's better music. Yeah. <laughs> 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 now I've had a few minutes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> psychedelic tune. <laughs> 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 Should we try, 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 try upside mine? Thank you. 
Your tribute to my friend Don Crane, <laughs> who passed. What are we going to do? April Shaw. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. By the downline of Sept in Sweden. <laughs> Everyone familiar with the downline of Sept, I hope. Yes, absolutely. Britain's third rate RB group, which is where you want to be if you're an RB group. <laughs> Where um, Downline of Sect were one of the first RB groups in the UK, supporting the Stones at uh, Hill Pipe and remaining true to their colours. Didn't turn into a uh, sort of like hideous sort of a uh, rock parody. Which in my book is a victory. <laughs> Had a hit with Baby What's Wrong, the jazzed up Jimmy Reed number. One, two, three.
said last night for the audience, uh, what a legendary evening, and we've had a second one. What's the How would that happen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And a big hand to Billy Childish. Yeah. Shall we get the uh, lines to do one more button again? Yeah, do you want yeah. one more?